Hey everyone, are you having trouble getting a nice sharp picture of the moon? Or maybe your photos are a little bit too bright and you're having trouble seeing the surface details? Now, if so, don't worry, I'm here to help. In this video, I'll guide you through diagnosing your camera issues and optimizing your techniques to get the perfect shot of the moon. Now, stick around until the end of the video and I'll even share with you my pro tips to help you get that stunning, razor sharp picture of the moon, just like this one. Any regular camera nowadays is good enough to take a stunning image of the moon. You do need a long focal length lens to capture the surface details of the moon. So in this video, I'm going to use my Canon M50 camera that I'm also using right now to record this video together with my Tamron 100 to 400 millimeter lens. And you'll find links to that gear in the video description below if you're interested. Now to ensure your camera stays perfectly still during the shot, Use a tripod and a shutter release cable or a remote app. Alternatively, you can set your camera to a 10 second countdown timer to ensure your shots come out completely vibration free to avoid any kind of blur in your picture. Now let's move on to adjusting the camera settings to capture the moon. To start, switch your camera to manual mode. Now for most cameras, you can simply turn the dial of your camera to M. After that, you'll want to adjust the exposure time, the f-ratio, the ISO value and the white balance. Personally, I set my exposure time to 1 1 25th of a second, my f-ratio to around f10 and my ISO value to about 100. Why don't I show you what happens when you adjust each of these settings? I've put my camera in video mode so you can see the effects. Let's start with exposure time. A very short exposure time of 1 4,000th of a second will give you a very dark picture of the moon, while 1 8th of a second will surely overexpose it. I find that 1 1 25th of a second gives me a bright picture without overexposing the surface of the moon. Now let's also look at the f-ratio. This is the relationship between the lens diameter and the focal length and it's calculated by dividing the focal length by the diameter of the lens. Now I find that an f-ratio below f10 results in an overexposed image of the moon, while an f-ratio higher than f16 uh, leads to an underexposed image. Finally, let's take a look at ISO. Now this refers to the sensitivity of your camera to light and I keep it to the lowest setting possible because the moon is a very bright object in the night sky. A higher ISO often leads to an overexposed picture of the moon without any of its surface details. So for night sky photography, it's best to set your white balance to tungsten light. You'll know it when you see the light bulb icon. Now this will give you a nice grayscale image of the moon and a dark blue night sky, even when taking pictures from a light polluted area. Now if you have autofocus, put it to continuous autofocus and focus on the moon. So that's AFC or AI servo, depending on your camera. Now if you have manual focus, just turn the focuser until the moon looks sharp on your camera's LCD screen. Now, once you've taken that first picture, be sure to zoom in all the way to check that your focus is sharp. So when you apply all of these tips, you probably end up with a very reasonable picture like this one. But it doesn't compare to this picture of the moon I've created using the exact same camera and lens on the exact same light. So I promised you to share my pro tips if you'd watch until the end of the video. So let me explain how I've captured that beautiful picture of the moon. It actually involves taking a one minute video of the moon and editing that video using different software programs that are all completely free to download and use. You can find links to the downloads for each of the programs that I use in the video description below. It will take a few minutes for me to explain the four different steps you'll need to take, but I promise you, you will be able to get that razor sharp picture of the moon that I just showed you when you follow this tutorial. My name is Wido Oerlemans and I'm an astrophotographer based in Utrecht, the Netherlands. I make YouTube videos about astrophotography and I'd love to share tips and tricks on how to take beautiful images of the night sky. Now, if you join me on my channel, you'll get to experience the breathtaking beauty of the night sky with me. I'd love to have you along for the ride, so be sure to subscribe and follow me on my journey. Let's take a one minute video of the moon. Now, to get the best quality video, make sure your camera is set to the highest available resolution. Now, for my Canon M50, that's 4K recording at 25 frames per second. 
I switched the camera dial to video and use the same settings you use for taking pictures. Now, once you're done recording that one minute video, download the video to your computer for further processing. If you are zoomed in at 400 millimeters or even more, you may have noticed the moon shifting during your one minute video recording. Now, to counteract this movement, you can use the Planetary Image Pre-Processing or PIP in short program. Now, all you need to do is to drag your downloaded movie file into PIP, select solar slash lunar full disk, and then go to the output options tab and select SER format. Then click on the do processing tab and hit start processing. This takes a few minutes, but you'll notice that the moon stays perfectly centered in the processed video. In AutoStackert, you can take the SER file produced by PIP and open it up. Drag the SER file to the view screen and you'll see a frame slider with an indication of the quality for each of the video frames. Select a sharp high quality frame and then head to the options menu and select surface under image stabilization and check on improved tracking. Leave the quality estimator settings to local AP and click analyze. AutoStackert will generate a quality graph that shows the quality for each of the frames in the video. On the left side of the graph are the best quality frames and on the right are the worst quality frames. By clicking on the graph, you can preview each of the corresponding frames in the view screen. As a rule of thumb, you could select all frames above the 50% line, which in my case includes almost all the frames of my video. You can fill out multiple boxes by typing in the number of frames to stack or the frame percentage to stack. For the sake of this tutorial, I'll ask AutoStacker to stack 90% of the frames, which are about 1400 frames of the moon. Next, you want to add alignment points to your frames in the view screen, which helps AutoStacker to align different areas of the moon between the different frames in your video to produce a stacked picture. Now, with a full moon, I usually select an AP size of 100 and a minimum brightness of about 20 that covers the whole disk. Next, click place AP grid and you'll notice a grid over your moon image. Now you're ready to stack. I'm not ticking the sharpened box, but do select the save in folders option. After that, click stack and AutoStacker will use all the selected frames into one stacked picture of the moon. So in the final step, I'm going to use a program called Registack 6. All you need to do is drag the stacked TIFF file produced by AutoStacker into Registack 6 and select the Wavelet tab. Click Show Full Image and leave the Wavelet scheme to Linear and the Wavelet filter to Gaussian. Then try dragging the first, second and third sliders to around 10% and click on Do All. You'll notice that your moon picture is much sharper than the individual moon pictures taken in higher resolution. If you want to make it even sharper, you can experiment with the sliders and the denoise and sharpen settings in each of the layers. When you're satisfied with the result, click on save image and save it in your preferred format. And that's it. So if you're looking to get into planetary imaging, I've got two great videos that will help you get started with programs like AutoStagger and Registex. Now, if you implement the tips I gave you, I'm sure you'll be able to take some amazing sharp images of the moon to show to your friends, your family or post online. So don't wait, go out there and capture some stunning pictures of the moon.